uh, we're looking forward to this program. Okay, can you guys see my screen now? Yes, it looks great. Okay, perfect. All right, because I'm not going to be able to see this part because I'm going to go into presentation mode now. So as um, Amy said, I'm Tanya Dudley from CoFence. Um, I, uh, we, Cofen sits on the board for National Cybersecurity Alliance. Um, Daniel has done this in the past. This, that was his focus when he was with um, National Cybersecurity Alliance, the small business community. And so until we get that role replaced, I was happy to step in and, and present to you guys today. And I've enjoyed just being able to participate because I have a heart for small businesses. I have friends that own small businesses. So I'm always giving them advice on their cybersecurity. So managing cyber, cyber risk in these challenging times. Um, so a little bit about who National Cybersecurity Alliance is. So National Cybersecurity Alliance is a nonprofit that builds a strong public-private partnerships to create and implement broad reaching education and awareness efforts to empower users at home, work, and school um, with the information that they need to keep themselves, their organizations, their systems, and their sensitive information safe and secure online and encourage um, a culture of cybersecurity. Um, so the theme of this slide deck is um, from our um, October Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, and while that is still, you know, cybersecurity is relevant every single month, every single day, um, uh, we do a really we do a really big campaign in October to really kind of um, pump up the volume when it comes to just making people aware. Um, myself, as I when I formerly um, worked in, in the enterprise level, I always had my users come up to me and say, "This was great for you know us at the business, but what do I do at home?" And so I always was able to reference um, materials from the cybersecurity awareness or from the cybersecurity. Um, Alliance. Um, and so we have lots of great materials there. And so you'll see a few of those uh, web links on here. Uh, but what we do have this month is we have um, Data Privacy Day coming up January 28th at the end of this month. If you go to this URL, there's a lot of content there that can help give you information about um, what you might need to do as an organization, as a small business, to protect um, the consumer um, data and information that you might have, that you might be holding, as well as yourself as an organization. And we do have a, an event. Um, the great thing about this year of everything being virtual is that you have access to far more information than you would ever have um, had you um, not been able to participate virtually because typically we only do this event live um, from the LinkedIn headquarters in San Francisco. Um, I am greatly missing the travel and the opportunity to be able to get there. Um, but another thing that we offer too is for you to become a champion and to sign up to be a champion that, that saying that your organization, your small business um, really um, values um, protecting um, the privacy of your customers. And so this is just another way for you to become involved in the community and um, get some recognition as far as, you know, what you do as far as protecting your customers. So why this topic, um, resilience, um, which is the, the ability to recover um, and adjust in miscomfort or change, right? And I think 2020 has certainly proved that this is a year to really challenge us how how resilient are we when it comes to um, dealing with factors that we just had not planned for. Um, so Daniel picked this picture. I left it in because I thought it was relevant, right? Um, just really explaining when we when we sum up 2020 and the topic of that we're discussing discussing here today, and just kind of showcasing, you know, full spectrum of threats that we can face that maybe our business community and um, and 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 the world, right? We've been seeing raging fires in Northern California, the the number of hurricanes that we saw, just the we. We, I know we don't want to even want to kind of think about 2020 now we're trying to look forward here, but amidst all of that, um, cyber um, threat art, threat actors have certainly taken advantage of, of this moment and these themes. And so just want to kind of um, bring some attention to some of the different ways that threat actors can maybe leverage or take, take advantage of this moment. Um, so what do cyber criminals do? They are employing uh, various methods that they try to trick um, 
or manipulate victims or um, targets to either disclose sensitive co or confidential information, such as your credentials. Um, that's a big one, and I'm going to get a little bit more into that, especially um, on the main topic. So, CoFence, we um, we do phishing defense, and so we do training. We do we have solutions that help you defend against um, phishing threats, and so um, that's a, a lot of what I'm going to be covering today because that's really um, what the space that I'm most familiar with and a bit passionate with. Um, you might gather that. As I, as I go through this, but um, you know, they might as well, tr you know, try um, to by getting you to click on a link, um, going to an infected website, and then installing um, malware on your machine or or your website, um, or gain access to physical locations. You know, this one is a little less common, um, but when we think about um, the target breach that happened many years ago, now it seems like a long time ago. Um, but the way that that um, that threat happened was that um, the threat actor targeted a HVAC repair person, their small business, they targeted them, they infected them so that when that person went to service a target um, facility or um, store um, and he logged in to get, you know, do some work on their system, they were, they used that entry point then to get into Target's network and then get to their credit card information. So just a little bit about how, you know, while it seems insignificant, um, it can lead to other things. And if you've heard, you know, listened to any of the news over the last probably three weeks and heard solar winds, that is a, another big um, threat that we have. We are just starting to unwind and it will take months before we can really understand the full impact of what's happened there. But there are, those are just really um, small examples of how and especially you as a small business community, um, you may be targeted without really understanding the impacts of it's not you that they're after, but it might be maybe your customers and you are an entry point into um, your customers. <clears throat> so phishing attacks are on the rise. And so um, I could talk about this all day. And actually the next few slides, I have some really good information that I hope that by um, understanding some of these phishing threats that will help you um, find ways that you can help defend your small business and your organization. Um, even just like, you, you know, you may have just a few hand, uh, handful of employees. So um, for you to gather them around and kind of walk through what a phishing attack is and what a phishing threat is and what is or isn't real um, is a little more, is easier than what we we CoFence deals with on the enterprise side when you have, you know, maybe a thousand to a hundred thousand users that you're trying to train on how to look for phishing threats. Um, and we do that through simulations by sending them a pretend phishing email that um, they look for the lures to say, okay, this is not real. And then what do they do with it from that point? But um, this particular article that is highlighted here was from, you know, CrowdStrike noticed that, you know, in the first half of 2020, they had more cyber attacks than even all of 2019. Um, closing out, like Daniel put this together in uh, October for his um, his campaign that he did across many different summits um, and presentations. Um, at that point, we hadn't known about solar, solar winds. Solar winds came up just before the holiday, um, the Christmas holiday. So. Um, we are going to start seeing more and more organizations speaking up over the next probably few months saying, yes, they were affected. Um, we even had a, a, a recent one yesterday. So um, stay alert to kind of what's going on in the threat landscape to understand uh, are the, the solutions or the providers that you're using, are they impacted by solar winds? From what we understand at this point, they were targeting government um, entities. Um, so anybody that may have been supporting that government entity may be impacted. And so and the other thing that, you know, that Daniel was trying to highlight at, with this slide here is that, you know, with COVID um, and COVID saw this as well, when, you know, initially threat actors were, were making very specific phishing emails that, um, that were related to COVID. Um, and this is one here that, that, um, that came up. What we saw over time was that the threat actors were realizing that, okay, these themes of COVID related, the pandemic, what's going on in the world, um, WHO, CDC, all the different entities that people were really tuning into to trust to where do I get my information from? That's what the threat actors were, um, were leveraging um, for their themes and to try and um, get in, people to interact, right? Because ultimately at the end of the day, the threat actor wants you to interact with their email. Um, 
at no point should you ever be getting an HTML file from somebody. Um, so that right there should be a clue. Um, and being a small business, it's easier for you to all know who you are within your organization, within your small business to know that, okay, Joe did not send me this email. If I need to know something, I, I should reach out to him directly. And so that's something that we always tell people, you know, that the email that you come and just don't trust it, right? This is very generic, general uh, emergency response unit from management. You know, here's some things that you should need to know. You know, obviously we haven't seen Corona virus spelled out like that, right? So there's little clues in here that kind of lead you to believe that, okay, this is not um, real. Um, but we did see, but then as, so, you know, for that first couple months, you know, everybody was rushing to work remotely. Um, teams were not, Teams that were normally not used to working remotely are not having to get situated. You know, they're not working regular hours, so they're more apt to click on things or, you know, they're not in their normal routine of doing things. Um, so threat actors were taking advantage of that. Then what we saw as, you know, as the numbers started to come down, um, the trends started to go down as far as the phishing, uh, COVID-related phishing themes. But then what we also saw was um, since they know, knew that those were getting... Um, used then what, what what we saw was because we track phishing themes and um, threat actors over time what we saw was that they were just adapting their existing phishing kits to insert a word so um, one of our co-founders will you know when he presents on this uh, he gets asked a lot of times did we see a huge influx of covid related themes and you know maybe a security team might you know, get somebody from their leadership saying, hey, are we getting targeted with COVID related emails? And they go looking in a, you know, in an, in an email box that they normally probably hadn't paid attention to. And now all of a sudden they're seeing these um, COVID related emails when, in, when all along they were still getting those same emails, but now because of COVID they're, um, they're noticing those, right? He, um, Aaron relates this to um, when you're going to shop for a car and you start looking at a particular, you know, to, uh, Toyota Tacoma, right? I'm now all of a sudden I'm noticing those cars in white, right? So if if I'm looking for something that I hadn't been looking for before, now I'm noticing it, and so it seems like it's a lot, um, a lot more. The other thing that we saw was, um, you know, when it came time for those small business loans, right? The SBA was, you know, um, helping coordinate some of this PPP. Um, uh, funds that were being distributed and we saw the threat actors again taking advantage of you know those moments where um, they're in, where they know they're gonna you know be able to commit fraud right ultimately their end goal is to make money right they're either nation state actors going after an organization to try and do damage for IP and threat to the organization or the country or they're going after money. And what we saw was a spike in this, um, these threat actors that are going specifically after money, where they're after, where they're there to commit fraud. I think I, I saw a recent article where, um, you know, the FBI has been tracking how much money have threat actors been gained through, um, through these um, PPP frauds, and it's actually quite significant. So, just another thing to watch out for. Um, because we cover enterprise, we don't have a lot of these um, these types of messages. We did see the SBA one come through. We saw even um, because we're global, we saw some the saw them taking advantage of some some of the international or um, countries that were also offering some um, financial support to to their um, businesses. Um, banks that were banks are constantly being targeted with. Um, with threat actors spoofing their website, um, their brand. Um, but the good thing is the finance, I can tell you that the financial services industry pays a lot of attention to um, threat actors chasing after their brand. They are constantly um, fighting that battle and making sure that at the end of the day, they wanna protect um, the funds that they are, um, the assets that they have, which is the accounts that people put their money in. So they're, they're very um, proactively looking out for these. But again, these are some themes that the threat actors have been using. Um, we're starting now to see as vaccines are, are now the theme, right? I'm starting to see those subjects come through as well. So um, just something to watch out for. Um, this one, although, like I said, enterprise, we don't see this, but as a small business, um, you you may experience this experience this more than uh, than a large enterprise. Um, at the end of the day, if the um, FBI put out this warning saying, "Hey, we're starting to see 
you know, threat actors are um, going after, you know, they're sending voicemail um, attacks, they're sending um, SMS messages. Um, and so just be alert that, you know, nobody's going to call you for these things, right? But we did see a spike in these. And when it comes to um, a, a text message uh, fish, which we have an example coming up, um, at the end of the day, they're looking for your credentials. The, um, because uh, our cell phones are newer technologies than our computers and our laptops, um, they're a lot more secure when it comes to actually um, hardening. They're not going to infect your phone to install m malware on there. What they are trying to get is you to click on those links to go to that website to enter information about you, about your organization, to try and um, leverage that information because now that information is valuable to them that they can then further along their attack. Employment scams are on the rise. So um, along with, you know, um, corona with the COVID um, pandemic, then we also saw, you know, um, unemployment um, grew. Um, as well as did the scammers that were trying to go after anything related to um, employment. So according to Pew uh, Research, unemployment rose f um, higher in the three months of, of COVID-19 than it did in two years of the Great Recession. So the um, COVID-19 outbreak and the economic downturn um, is has swelled in the ranks of unemployment in Americans for more than 14 million um, from six point. 2 million in February to 20.5 million in May of 2020. Um, so with all of this, um, this also adds to the complexity and to the, um, just the anxiety and uh, the, the um, effect that a threat actor is gonna be able to leverage those moments to be able to take advantage of, of somebody who's in a weak moment, right? Um, FedEx actually did a great, great thing by sending out this tweet saying, hey, uh, you may be getting these notices. And actually, I've, I've seen a few of these myself, right? You get that text message that says, hey, you have a package that's waiting for you. Um, I've seen them from FedEx. I've seen them from USPS. Um, this one even uh, directs to Netflix. At the end of the day, like I said, they're going after your credentials. But what these big brands do try and do a really good job of is giving you a way to report and let them know, right? Because they're going to chase after these threat actors to try and take them down. It's a cat and mouse game, um, but they do make attempt, right? Because these brands, they want to protect the reputation of their brand and make sure that, you know, at the end of the day, their brand matters because that's their business. And so they want to make sure that they're, at the end of the day, they're taking care of you. Um, again, phishing, 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 right? So even IRS, right? We are now getting into tax return time, right? Tax filing time. We will start to see those themes um, come up. Just yesterday, I was looking through one of a uh, one of the botnets that we follow and threat actors. Um, that is very um, dangerous. But they the the message themes that they were using were W nine. So they've already started to look at okay, tax season's coming up, people are gonna have to file taxes, so they're gonna start using those. Um, charity fraud is another thing, right? So um, leveraging where nonprofits might be going out to try and help um, help others for donations, um, asking for gift cards, asking for donations, right? At the end of the day, um, they're after those money, right? It all, it, it's At the end of the day, it's about the money, right? They want um, that money. And so they're going to leverage and play on those emotions to be able to get you to engage with them. So when it comes to small businesses, this is another thing that we are seeing on the rise. So business email compromise. So what this is, is a threat actor will send an email. So this email does not contain a link or an attachment. I usually typically would um, expect with a phishing email, right? This one is actually just asking you to engage with them. Um, in 2019, in the fall of 2019, the FBI reported that this was a $26 billion um, problem. Um, just this, this alone, right? Where they send an email, they get you to engage. Now this one happened to be about gift cards and this is a very common one. I have actually um, spoken with retailers who have talked about stories where they had clerks that um, were able to stop somebody from buying a big sloth of gift cards because 
they knew that something wasn't right about them buying these gift cards that they needed to send to somebody, right? Many times they'll impersonate the boss, um, making it look like it's coming from the CEO or the CFO within the organization saying, hey, I need you to do something for me real quick. Um, sometimes they'll even say, can, uh, can I text you and try and take it off of email so now it's harder for somebody to track or trace or report. Um, to get you into engage. And so a lot of times what we've seen with these is um, they're asking for, hey, I need you to change my direct deposit. So at the end of the day, the employee's out of a, a paycheck because uh, they've they've asked for the direct deposit um, information now to get changed, the bank account information to get changed. Uh, we see um, invoice transactions are the top uh, threat theme that they go after, right? They have learned your process around um, purchase order, invoices, um, accounts receivable ledgers. Ask, they will ask for an accounts receivable ledger to target a small business like you, not to go after you, but then to send in an invoice or a purchase order to an organization that you might do business with um, and then asking them to send, redirecting that money, those funds to go somewhere else. If you do come across um, any type of these scams and at some point somebody in your organization or your business has offered, you know, has giving over, has turned over funds, has pushed that send on the wire, has, you know, um, transferred money, the quicker you can get to report that, the quicker um, the FBI can work with um, the financial institutions to try and get that money back. I worked in financial services. That um, industry works very closely together trying to combat this problem. And so they will they are fighting this hard and they are doing um, whatever they can to try and help um, either retrieve those funds, stop the funds from moving on. Um, many times these threat actors um, have a, a network of mules that kind of move the money around before it then ultimately gets to them. So they're constantly chasing this. Like I said, this is from 2019. We have not even seen what the number looks like for last year. Um, my guess it's more than doubled just um, in talking to some of the researchers that chase this threat um, pretty heavily. Um, so like I said, this is probably one of the most dangerous ones when it comes to protecting your business um, for funds. And so this one is near and dear to my heart. So that website link on there. And if you go to that website, there's lots of more information about what you can do, how to look for it. Um, again, social unrest, right? The threat actors are taking advantage of this moment. You know, when Black Lives Matter was, you know, starting to spike and we were seeing, you know, a lot more um, um in July, you know, when a lot of that, those protests were happening, they were also using this theme, trying to get you to interact, you know, it, um, get involved. I've yet to see anything from the last few weeks of um, the Capitol attack. I hope, <laughs> I just hope that we don't see those themes, but um, it's very, like I said, they like to take care of these um, very sensitive topics. Um, interestingly enough, <laughs> in 2011, uh, the CDC actually put out the zombie preparedness as more of a, a kind of catchy way to kind of get you to prepare, um, to be prepared for um, a natural disaster or a physical um, disruption. Um, so um, funny enough that like this, this is still out there. This is still something that is, um, is available for you to kind of take a look at just to kind of understand how you should get be prepared for um, your business. If you haven't already um, with what we've been through in the last year, certainly there might be some more information available for you there. But just a just a funny anecdote that, you know, little did they know that in 2020, we all felt like we were going to be, <laughs> we were under the zombie attack. So um, again, so I just before, um, before I kind of close this out and wrap this up a little bit, because we are, I looks like I'm running close to time. Um, just uh, if you're unsure about an email, don't click on it, call and verify, follow up outside of that email. You know, if you, if you have an email that says it's from somebody, look at who the reply to is, maybe reach out to them directly via a phone or send a, a separate email to say, hey, did you mean to send this to me? Um, really, you know, take a moment to just stop and, and look at those emails and then pay attention to those, um, those requests for, hey, sending a direct deposit, a payment ledger, um, a purchase order, an invoice. Those are the themes that we're seeing them. Um, so what should you do as an individual? So um, as a consumer, protect your privacy. There's lots of um, information that is online when we come, you know, privacy day is coming up. Um, locked on your login, there's lots of information on on this um, 
on the website, on the National uh, Stay Safe Online website. One of the things that I always, people always ask, how can I protect myself from, um, you know, credential theft is uh, locking down your login by um, using a password vault. Um, use a unique username and password across all of your sites. I know it's daunting, but that's where that password vault really can help save you because what, what threat actors do is they will, um, they'll buy those password um uh, username and password dumps off the off the dark web, right? And then they try and see, okay, where else can I get access to to this information? Or where can I log into? Can I log into their social media? Can I log into their bank accounts? Um, and further do damage to kind of take over. Um, Clean Machine, I'm just going to highlight just this one real quick. I know small businesses use WordPress. WordPress is the number one um, uh, threat vector that threat vector that a threat actors. Um, leverage to compromise. So while you might have a website stood up, they are um, potentially setting up subdomains under under there. So it looks like that somebody may be going to your website, but they're actually going to another place where they've stored their malicious content um, to further their, uh, their attacks. Um, so if you're using WordPress, only enable the things that you're using that you really need for running your website. And um, and minimize that and, and make sure you have that secure um, as far as the, the username and password, don't use defaults um, and keep those in a vault and very limited. And then also making sure that you're running updates. So um, many times it's the add-ins add that you're using on the website that um, become compromised, um, that become vulnerable. So uh, making sure that you keep those up to date is gonna actually protect your business as well, which I think I just covered a lot of what's on this slide. Looking forward, um, I, we see over fifty over fifty seven percent of phishing emails that we see today are going after uh, credentials. So um, enable multi factor, two factor um, authentication for any of your logins. The more you can do that, the more you're going to protect your um, your business, your credentials, your information. So again, as I return to this topic again, resiliency. So the concept of being able to rebound and getting back on your feet after something um, drastic has happened um, is about being resilient. And I think we've all kind of, we've made it through 2020. So I think we've all um, proven our level of resiliency at this point. Um, lots of resources that are available on the website for you as a small business as well. Um, we have a COVID uh, resource center on there, which CoFence actually has a library that is linked on there as well. So there's plenty of businesses, um, other resources that you can get to for um, dealing with the COVID. And there's some security awareness videos on there too, if you have a small staff that you wanna be able to give some security awareness training on what to look out for. Um, more resources, Daniel put lots of resources in here. Um, so I just wanna remind everyone again, two weeks, um, the 28th, we are having uh, data privacy day. And here is my contact information, and I'm going to stop sharing, but I know these slides will be made available. Amy, I'll get these to you.